Can you talk about, uh, I know you have two new, um, hopefully initiatives is the right word, uh, uh, basically the Climate Reality Project and, and Climate Tracing. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, the Climate Reality Project is a project that I started uh, back in 2006 with all of the profits from the movie and book and Inconvenient Truth. And right now we're in the middle of our 44th training and this is the first virtual training. And I was so uh, happy uh, that 14, more than 14,000 people applied to join. We couldn't handle that many because we don't have enough mentors uh, to do that big a group yet. Uh, but uh, 10,000 signed up. We're in the sixth day of a nine day training. And in the nature of these uh, virtual trainings, you avoid what they call Zoom fatigue by uh, doing it two hours a day, uh, basically. Uh, it's a real thing. <laughs> and I believe it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so it's going extremely uh, well. Thank you. And we have people from 130 countries, and we give them the facts about the science, the causes, the impacts, the solutions, and we give them advocacy and communication skills even better than what most of them already have. Uh, and you asked also about the Climate Trace uh, Initiative. Thank you. This is a new coalition uh, that is made up uh, of nine uh, tech organizations and companies, a lot of brilliant young people engaged in artificial intelligence and machine learning. And our, uh, our goal is to launch uh, next June. We will have a hard launch at the beginning of the year, but the uh, by next June, we will have a report on every significant uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions uh, anywhere in the world. How much, who's responsible for it, and then we'll update it every six hours. And the point is to make this, uh, these folks accountable for the first time. Uh, there are a lot of uh, governments that really have a hard time uh, understanding where their own greenhouse gas emissions are coming from. There are a lot of companies that want their supply chains to, to scrub out the, the global warming uh, pollution. There are a lot of activists that want to know where it's coming from. And there are a lot of investors who want to take their money out of companies that are uh, busy at destroying the future of human civilization and put it into companies that are facilitating a transition to a cleaner and more prosperous and sustainable world. You mentioned Zoom fatigue. Uh, having been uh, a candidate for the presidency, can you imagine what it must be like for Joe Biden right now, having to basically campaign from uh, his home? It seemed, must be so different from what you experienced. Well, it's very different. We haven't seen a, a, a campaign uh, like, like this one geographically for a long, long time uh, since before the days of television. And uh, I think that he's handling it extremely well. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm for him, and so you can uh, uh, take my remarks with a grain of salt, but uh, I really think he's doing extremely well. Uh, and most people seem to share that view. You, he maybe was not um, the greenest candidate uh, when there was a large debate field. Uh, yet he seems to be taking the environment very seriously on his platform now. Are you, uh, you know, obviously, uh, considering how you feel about it as an issue, are you optimistic uh, so far of how he would address it as the president? Absolutely. And to put uh, your, your comment in perspective, it's true that there were other candidates like Jay Inslee prominently and uh, others as well who had uh, maybe a bolder climate agenda during the primaries. But if you look at Joe Biden's plan during the primaries, it was miles ahead of what we have seen in any previous uh, cycle. And wisely, he has adopted some of the best uh, proposals from his primary opponents and fully integrated them into his new plan. I've, I have uh, enjoyed my conversations with him since uh, Joe Biden secured the nomination. I'm very happy with what he has proposed. There are always a few things that I would, you know, do a little differently, go a little farther and faster. But honestly, it is a great platform. Uh, and I think it's getting rave reviews from most all the folks who really care about the climate crisis. Obviously, uh, Joe Biden is far ahead in the polls. 
but we should still be very worried, right? We can't just rest on our laurels here and be happy with a 15 point lead in a July poll. Well, I can confirm that, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> the actual votes are what determine the winner. Uh, his lead is, uh, is a good one, but after the experience uh, supporters of the nominee four years ago had uh, watching a poll lead, not quite as large as this one, but pretty big, uh, just sort of disappear. Everybody uh, kind of says, well, wait a minute, I'm not taking anything for granted. And I would like to quote uh, the great uh, departed John Lewis. Uh, he, he was a, a dear friend and such a great champion and also a climate champion, by the way. Uh, he and I introduced the very first environmental justice bill uh, 30 years ago. Um, and when he crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge for the very last time last year, people knew that he had pancreatic cancer and it was an emotional uh, occasion. He got to the other side and I was watching the interview on television and I got kind of emotional hearing him uh, say, he said, we've got to vote like we've never voted before. And I hope everybody uh, takes that message to heart because this will be a turnout election. Uh, Trump supporters will turn out uh, and uh, the supporters of Biden just need to turn out in even larger numbers. I kind of think that's the direction it's headed in right now, but nobody should take a single vote for granted. Thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure speaking with you, and hopefully next time we'll be in person. I hope so, too. Thanks, Seth. Keep up the great work. All right. All the best.